So throughout this course, and that frustrates me tremendously, I get asked several questions. So I explain something, I, I'm get, I get so excited about this topic that I explain and the intricacies, and then somebody asks me, is this on the exam? Or the other question that I get asked, how is it useful in real life? All the time, right? And those are psychological questions. Is it on the exam? You just reveal yourself, right? You revealed your soul. It means you're telling me I could care less about what you had to say. And how useful it is in real life, you're really not asking a question, you're telling me it's not useful, okay? Uh, well, I would like you to feel that mathematics is more like a poem. And if you speak Russian, you can find uh, uh, this poem under this link uh, in Russian. I just uh, uh, found this translation. This summarizes what you would experience in my class, especially at the end, and that will come very soon. In fear and strengthlessness, you shiver. I hear you whisper, let me go. You from my soft wings I deliver and smile upon you, fly below. Right? Beneath my smile, divinely whining in an annihilating flight, like I called stone, you flutter spinning into the glittering void of night. Now, uh, if you don't enjoy poetry as much, let's ask a few questions. I hope some of you have bothered watching 12 Angry Men. Why did I ask you to watch this is what we're going to do today. I'm trying to entice you to see what mathematics is really like, what you might be thinking about very soon if you actually uh, think about it sincerely. And the question we will consider today is this. How certain are you of your common sense? Do you believe you are able to think objectively? Have you ever thought objectively in your entire life? Can you ever perceive anything in your existence without bias? And we begin this with, a, with the following question. Okay? That's a question from probability. It seems like a very simple question. And then, then I want to see what you will say in all your honesty. You are invited to a household that has two children. You have never seen those children. You know nothing about them. You arrive at this household and on the lawn, in the yard, you observe that one child is playing and this child is a girl. Question, what's the probability that both children are girls? So think about it and either let me know by sending me a message or by deciding and talking to me. I like both. Do you understand my question, guys? Do you see it? How do we answer it? You said uh, so so uh, my question is about probability and already Heidi, thank you Heidi so much for answering and Carolina, they said a few things, they, they gave me an answer. So 50%, 25% and so, yeah, so the question is this, we have a family, we know it has two children, can you see me right, two children. And um, yes, two children and uh, you observe now that one of these children is a girl. My question is what's the probability that both children are girls. One in two, 50%, 50%, one quarter, 50%, 50%, 25. 25, some people say. Actually, I don't think you can answer that question. And one person says, I cannot answer this question. So yeah. some person says 60%. Again, guys, let me, let's be precise. We are not examining biology here. We are asking this. Suppose that each child is either a girl or a boy. We don't mess with uh, non-binaries for a moment, right? let's make it simpler so a boy or a girl and equal likelihood okay so gender is girl or boy we have two children that is no one of the children one of the children is a girl what's the probability that both children are girls and i see oh interesting julia uh, interesting 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 and i see some people say 50 percent one person says 33 percent uh, some people say 60 percent 25 percent Hmm? Well, don't use my psychology. See, one thing that people uh, people try to read is uh, what I think is the right answer. That's that's not what we're doing here. What is that you think is the right answer? And forget about it. Maybe I say something is right. You don't have to agree with me. By the way, guys, right? One thing I want to make clear is if you disagree with me, you don't have to hide it from me. I do not get irritated by people that disagree with me unless, of course, they throw 
feces in my face. You understand? If, if you don't do that, there is no reason I would be upset. So most of you say 50%, right? And that's like what you have 12 angry men, uh, in 12 angry men. So you have a conclusion that you are reaching based on the information I give. And Heidi changed their mind, okay. So let me reveal the answer, okay? The chances that both girls, I'm asking, right? The chances that both girls are, uh, that both children, sorry, are girls, that's what I'm asking, given that one child is a girl. So let me now reveal the answer. So the answer, guys, is one third. 33% is the closest to it, but one third is 33.333. Uh, it's one third. Now let me explain why is it one third. It's one third because, and that's by the way, Leibniz, a genius in mathematics. What you're making, if you think it's 50%, is it's called Leibniz error or Leibniz fallacy. And I'll tell you about this fallacy maybe later after we finish this class. Um, right? So what you have, what you observed, you uh, you are you have to know that what we're asking is uh, about both children, probability of both children. Now, you know that one is a girl, but you do not know if it's the oldest or the youngest child. So you are uh, if, if both are girls if both oldest and youngest child is uh, well, both oldest and youngest ch child. They are both girls. But it's possible that uh, the oldest is boy and youngest is girl, or oldest is girl and youngest is boy, right? So there are three equally likely possibilities and only one of them is the desired outcome. So it's one out of three possibilities, each of them being equally likely. There are many other ways to solve that. We're just solving it in the fastest possible way, okay? The answer is one third. If you go and take my probability course, and I offered you several times, right? I'm trying to lure you in you will be able to follow at least for the first chapter, at least for combinatorics, it doesn't require any background, and then possibly into chapter two, where calculus begins to be introduced, you understand? Uh, so there are many, many ideas that you can kind of begin to follow, but calculus is important for probability theory. And now guys, let's make this question, let's let's make this, uh, this next uh, question, right? Now, her mother comes to your car and starts yapping up, right? Just blah, 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 and you don't listen. Uh, and then suddenly you hear that this precious child was born on a Wednesday. What is the probability that both are girls now? You understand what I'm saying, right? So, so uh, Gabriela says still 33%. Uh, somebody says one quarter suddenly, one third, one third, one third, one third, one third. It's so nice that you're able to remove unimportant information and think objectively. Yes, guys? It's extremely nice that you right away realize that being born on a Wednesday has nothing to do with the gender of the girl, supposedly, right? We're not assuming that being born on a Wednesday makes it more or less likely. Yes, yeah, so you're all saying, or most of you are saying one third, maybe one person said one quarter, right? That was me, I changed my mind. <laughs> It's fine, 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 right? No, no, no worries, guys. Don't. I, I showed you some previews, right? I hope you're not following peer pressure, that you are following your thoughts and your hearts. Be wrong, but be wrong because of yourself and not because of me or somebody else. Don't follow crowds, right? It's a difficult thing to do, but try to not follow crowds. Are you with me, guys? I hope you're excited. All of you are so brilliant and. Uh, Cunning that you say it's one third and all of you are completely wrong. The answer is 13 divided by 27. <laughs> I want to see a smile on your precious faces or a surprise or bewilderment that you're still alive, right? Do you have a pulse? The answer is 13 over 27. Now, let me try to explain why. You see, most people think that uh, this information is unimportant. Because they, uh, but, but they are, but what their mistake is that you are taking the wrong object that you're counting. You have not selected the right object that you are trying to count. Here is, uh, uh, here is the right object, you see? So this information with what the mother is saying is, is a vector that has four coordinates. So you have two children and now uh, it, it comes into play what day they were born in, right? So we are going to assume that each child is equally likely to be boy or girl and each child is equally likely to be born on any of the seven days of the week, 
You understand? So this is the uh, information uh, parameter that we're considering. X is the gender of the oldest child. Y is the gender of the youngest child. And I don't mean X, Y chromosome. I just mean uh, placeholder, right? And so what you have now observed after, after this mother was speaking to you, you now know that you are dealing with either this situation or that situation. You either are observing the oldest child, the oldest girl, and she is born on Wednesday, or you are observing the youngest girl that was bo born on Wednesday. So this information is filled in, understand? You see this vector? Now, how many more possibilities are there? Uh, there are two possibilities for the gender of the young girl and seven possibilities for the week, uh, for the day of the week on which the child was born. So look at this. So this has two multiplied by seven or 14 possibilities. This also has 14 possibilities, but they have an overlap. The overlap is girl Wednesday, girl Wednesday. So therefore it's two times 14 minus one. Counting this event plus this event, it's two times 14 minus the overlap, which is uh, one unit. So then you get 27 possibilities. There are 27 equally likely possibilities of which uh, again, right? Uh, uh, girl W, girl. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so, um, so of those, uh, so those possibilities here represent that we have both girls, right? So we don't know what's the uh, other one. So how many of them are there, right? How many of them that there are both girls? If it's both girls, it's first coordinate is a girl, second coordinate here uh, for the gender is a girl, but uh, we also have oldest girl that I observed, girl Wednesday girl, and I don't know the date of the birth for the last one or i do not know the date of the birth for the oldest uh, child and how many possibilities are there now this now has um has seven possibilities and this has seven possibilities and there is again the overlap girl wednesday girl wednesday so it's two times seven minus one or 13 possibilities therefore you get a probability of 13 over 27. professor yes I don't, I don't understand why the weekday is relevant information. Is ah, it well, it that's, that, that's why I am inviting all of you guys. You, you can already, if you missed my first lecture for probability, first of all, I made, I tried to make videos when, when uh, we had the lockdown. And then I also had the recording of yesterday's video and I also have lectures there, right? So it's basic principle of counting. The, pro the mistake that people make is that you have to be extremely sharp about what is it that you are counting, right? What information is around, what is it that you are counting here? Very roughly speaking, uh, the probability will tend to be one half. You see, so everybody says one half at the beginning because what's your mistake? You assume that you are observing something very definite. If you think about it carefully, you either you assume that the child is oldest or youngest. If the child is oldest or youngest, the probability is one half. So every update of information either doesn't change the probability or makes it more to be one half, closer to one half. One half when you know everything about this person. The more I know about this particular person, the more my data approaches to this situation where I know it's the youngest or the oldest. That's roughly the philosophy. To make it very precise, I will have to go too far aside to explain to you, right? Uh, what goes on here, but that's very, very fascinating. Uh, what is it that you have to count? What is it that you observe? If, if you study probability, it will make your brain somewhat more sharp. And uh, let me now go into today's lecture, which, which possibly, I hope uh, uh, you are not the type of person, but it could possibly irritate you, either bore you or irritate you or frustrate you, because uh, uh, what I'm going to say to you is going to be possibly weird to you. Oh, uh, wait, um, before you move on, um, I understand the, the, you know, I understand what you're trying to say, but why are you subtracting um, one? That's uh, yes. the one. Uh, uh, this, this we can again talk about in, in more detail. Why is I, is because look at it, I need to know how many outcomes are possible. In probability, you track, you, you count all the possible universes and select oh. the universe that you want. So the universes we're counting here are uh, the universe in which I see uh, the uh, the child and that's the oldest child so girl wednesday i'm observing the oldest child and i know nothing about the youngest child or i'm in the universe where i'm observing the youngest child and i know nothing about the oldest but those two universes have an overlap the overlap lap is uh, girl wednesday girl wednesday understand so that both children were are girls and both were born on a wednesday that's the overlap so i count how many outcomes in this universe and how many outcomes in the, in this set of universes so that this set of universes plus this set of universes in here you have 14 in here you have 14 
so altogether you have uh, two times 14 universes, but one of those universes was counted twice, namely girl W, girl W, girl Wednesday, oh, girl Wednesday. So that's, so um, when the question says out of one of these children, right, we only taking the probability of one of those children uh, were you born on a Wednesday or? Well, we are, well, we know that one of the children is a girl and that same child is born on a Wednesday. That's how I was able to fill in this information. But I, okay. I don't know if it's the oldest or youngest, you see? Uh, and you would have been all correct to say it's one half if, 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 if I'm given this information. I know I'm observing the oldest child. That's it. I right away know the uh, other child is a girl with a 50 chance, 50 percent chance. You understand? But that's yeah. a mistake that even very, very brilliant people have made. It's very, very counterintuitive, very insidious and very dangerous subject probability, which uh, I first hated and maybe you might have first hated it because it's always so frustrating. You get it wrong all the time until you realize what is it that you might need to do to get it right. And that gets exciting. Okay. And if you are interested, I, I again, my, my goal, my personal, it makes me so happy when I'm able to entertain you and when I'm able to make you study something that you were not supposed to maybe uh, go and, and learn something that you did not expect to learn. Right? And if, I able, if I'm able to do that, I will be very happy. Okay, so you see, this is a question that you might think is not a, not a very real question, right? I mean, why, what's the importance of this question to your real life, okay? That's the question today. Uh, so my first thing is uh, here is that if you forego thinking and you follow somebody, if you follow me, for example, as well, right? So I, I would purposefully try to deceive you. And, and I did it many times and it upsets me to no bounds to see that, that people write down what I specifically said to them is a lie. Just because they want to memorize it, just because they don't care. Much of what happens to you, much of the way a propaganda gets into your mind is just you blindly trust something. You understand? If you blind, blindly trust something, you are already defeated. It's like a virus that gets into your system and uh, you will never dislodge it. There are many things that people have when they're children, they are very gullible and they would believe it forever. And there are many things that you have now that uh, you, be, you might believe forever and there's nothing I can do about it. Even if what you believe is complete nonsense, complete BS. If you follow somebody blindly, you are following that somebody like a lemming of a cliff. And that's the picture that I want to show you. And if you don't believe me, we will make the conversation very dangerous now, okay? I mean, not to you, maybe dangerous to me, okay? So here is my question, why? are we holding meetings through Zoom? Why am I not seeing you in person? And you can answer it again. Just any, any way, guys. Don't be uh, scared to tell me what you think. Because of the pandemic? Uh, because of the pandemic, but be more specific. So there is a pandemic, right? Yeah. I might say because of the giraffe. Why? There's less uh, risk online than in person. Who has a risk? Uh, so, so tell me what's the difference? What, why? Um, I mean, because of the pandemic, it's just, uh, I'm an alien. I don't understand those words, right? Why are you not meeting uh, when there is a giraffe? Why are you not, but we are not meeting because of a pandemic. Tell me. Why is the risk different? Well, what exactly is, is going? So you, you say because of the pandemic, that is not an explanation. So to stay safe. To stay okay. safe. Uh, well, so, so say it more uh, more precisely guys say it precisely state regulation sure right all those things because state of regulation but but uh, the question is is it uh, meaningful is it stupid or is it not stupid that we are not meeting in person not stupid uh, says lockdown not stupid so it's very smart right it's it's very uh, well thought out reasoned and uh, whatever is happening is absolutely correct yes all right. Uh, to embarrass each other, but it's much better to do that in school, right? Like, uh, then you are hiding there. I don't even know what you are. You are, so to speak, spirits, uh, entities without a body, uh, subject to the individual. Again, guys, you see, the problem is, you see, when you argue something, you have to explain what is the goal and what, so two things that, I, that you have to understand why I'm asking this question, guys, right? You want to explain the goal what is it that you want to achieve? And why do you believe that uh, your strategy achieves this goal? So a goal. So you see, Carolina, uh, what you said is very nice, but you just uh, said because of something, but what is the goal? And what is it that you want to do to achieve that goal? You understand? So that's what you do in mathematics. You don't uh, decide 
what is the smart motive and what's the wrong motive, you decide what is the goal and what might be a strategy to achieve that goal, which is, uh, which is that uh, smart strategy, okay? That's what I mean by that, okay? So, uh, so uh, let me try to say my perspective about it, right? So we are not meeting because of calculus. Understand, we are not holding in-person calculus lessons because of calculus lessons. I'm not claiming that that's truly at heart the reason, but that's the reason by which our not meeting has been officially justified to people that like to think about it, okay? I'm not saying obviously that's the reason, right? I think the reason is far more um, plain or so, far, far less noble than that. But let me try to explain to you uh, what I mean by that, okay? So you can, I will, there are videos attached in this, um, in this link that, uh, that show you how this is explained, right? So we have this hashtag flatten the curve, right? What is this all about? Flatten the curve. That's really what, it, what it's blustered on every, uh, on every channel on YouTube. It's really cool to wear masks in Uber. It's uh, cool to be socially distancing. We are all, what is it? Uh, we are all together separately or all separately together and that stuff, right? So let me show you uh, what's the idea mathematically, okay? So there exists in theory a vulnerable population, right? There is a virus and there exists a vulnerable population. Uh, to make uh, the formula simple, imagine that this vulnerable population is, is one, one percent, right? This is basically one represents um, uh, the, the sum total of all people that will potentially be at risk of getting infected or, or, or of being sick. Understand? People that are vulnerable that will react to this disease, not necessarily die, but be infected. Understand? Be infected by this disease, uh, exhibit symptoms or just uh, reproduce the virus. Okay? And then uh, they have this uh, or equation. Don't worry, you're not supposed to understand it. This is, this is called the logistic differential equation. What roughly this equation, differential equation is saying is that when a contagion begins to spread. Initially, you see this? Initially, this will mean that uh, the rate of its spread is proportional to the infected population. And that will mean that initial spread is exponential. And we'll talk about it just below. Uh, and eventually, because exponential growth is so large, it is not sustainable, it will taper off. So you have this. Now to solve, uh, um, to solve just even this very, very simple equation, uh, you need a lot of calculus, right? So uh, you will need to learn, this is differentiation. We'll talk about differentiation in the semester. And at the end of this course, we will talk about integration theory. And you see that uh, there are all sorts of kind of uh, tools to solve this differential equation. And then you have logarithms appearing. And eventually in the solution, you have exponents appearing, e to the power of RT, right? E is a number, guys, that is uh, so important. I mean, it is the number by which that decides in some sense if you wake up on uh, the wrong side of the bed. And it is, of course, a number that will determine whether you do well in this class or not, both probabilistically and, of course, if you don't understand this number, you are not going to do well in this class. Not now. Now we are not understanding this number. It's still okay. But throughout this class, you will have to understand this is called the base of the natural uh, logarithm or E, okay? So let me interpret what this equation, what is P0? P0 is patient zero. It's, it's the fraction. In, in my formula, it's a fraction, just to make the formula simple. It's the fraction of, of infected individuals that you introduce and then they begin to spread the infection, you understand? So this is the fraction of the, of the vulnerable population already infected. You follow me? Uh, guys, you are with me, uh, uh, not yet surprised, okay? And, uh, and uh, okay, so to understand this, that's why I presented already, just to understand this, you need properties of differentiation, you need integration, you need natural logarithms, you need pretty much everything that we will learn in this class and possibly a few more things, you understand? Just to solve one simple equation. And that's the logistic equation by which, uh, uh, by which we decide, um, by which we decide, uh, you know, that's the model they presented. I can show you links, right? That's the model by which flatten the curve was justified. I will speak more about it below. That's the thing that generates your curve that you see in, in those pictures. You will see it in a moment, right? So here is a question. I don't expect you to answer it. I just wonder uh, only intuitively, or if you have a gut feeling, or maybe can you take a hunch, right? 
what do you think this equation, if this is truly a model for the spread of the virus, what does this expression ex equation say about uh, your likelihood of getting COVID if you are vulnerable, if you are part of that vulnerable population? Will masks help? Will social distancing help according to this formula or not? In other words, if this is the true formula by which the, uh, by which the infection is spread, will any of the measures help against uh, getting it? What do you think? You understand my question, right? So uh, I, I would hope you will speak or you will write to me. I, I enjoy both, especially your speech, so I can hear you. Okay, somebody decided, and guys, okay, well, well, the formula then the likelihood of getting COVID is high, but the formula doesn't factor everything. Well, again, guys, right? Uh, uh, let's, 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 let's look at this uh, equation and uh, uh, here is what, let me help you a little bit, right? So as T goes to infinity, as time progresses, the limit, uh, and we will learn about infinite limits soon enough, the limit is equal to one, okay? Now, if you know that the limit is equal to one, I wonder, can you interpret what this formula means? So as T goes to infinity, uh, the limit is equal to one. What does it mean? I hope you are excited, guys, right? Uh, because this is just the beginning of what uh, we're going to talk about. And that's what I mean is this, right? So uh, I'm, I'm testing for now your theoretical uh, ability to reason, right? So uh, this doesn't matter, right? Uh, it, not you specifically, if you are part of the vulnerable population. You understand what this formula is saying is as follows, right? So uh, an infectious disease, the kind of COVID, supposedly that's what they used uh, to model it. That's the flatten the curve entire thing. I will show you below. And I, okay, so check about it. What, what's the flatten the curve? The curve that you see as a picture, it's a curve generated by the logistic formula. You understand? So uh, whatever conclusions that they are supposedly making mathematically is based on the logistic equation. And therefore I'm asking you, are, the, um, are, are all those uh, measures, the lockdown, social distancing, everything, et cetera, going to affect uh, the likelihood of uh, a vulnerable person getting this illness, getting COVID, you understand? So if you might, I don't know if you are uh, protected or not, you are young, you might not get it, you might, and by getting, guys, I mean, get, whatever you consider a vulnerable population, maybe a carrier, maybe a asymptomatic carrier, it doesn't matter. In fact, you know, you'll be infested with this virus and you, um, your cells are producing. That's what I'm asking, okay? The fact that it equals to one, what, what is the formula say? Okay, cool. Everyone gets infected, Rachel, absolutely. All right, uh, that means everyone will get it. No matter what you do, as time goes on, everybody will get this disease, okay? And uh, let me tell you heuristically, right, that heuristics doesn't matter much here, right? But uh, I, do, I do know, um, and everyone means of that theoretical uh, yes, hey, uh, Heidi, could you, uh, where are you there? Yeah. Uh, go ahead and speak. Isn't the point of like flying the curve not to like stop people from getting infected, but so that it spreads out throughout time, so that not everybody gets absolutely. infected at the same time, you are but that correct. everybody will get infected, just we won't not be overwhelmed by so many people being infected, so we still have the opportunity to actually treat them and help them out during the infection. Yes, absolutely. That's where we're going to head on in a moment, right? Uh, you anticipated exactly what I will say in a moment, right? So, uh, so the idea is uh, according to their model, 
right? Uh, everybody gets infected. And heuristically, again, I've known of a girl, so she, uh, her mother is, uh, she falls into a vulnerable population and they were that terrified of this disease, that even though they have three dogs, they did not go out of the house for three months at all, not a single time. Out of the house, they got, uh, a, a, at least according to the test, they have the antibodies and uh, the girl told me she felt sick at some point so they got the disease that's not that that's of course not a proof that uh, that everybody gets it my point is those measures as uh, i think who was saying that rachel or not rachel somebody else was saying it right i can't remember who was, was saying that but uh, um, if you can remind me I, I liked what you just mentioned it was very nice of you so uh, the idea was that uh, although and that's the next question so everybody will get this disease and uh, and you see so you of course you you, you drive in brooklyn and you see outside with no mask, forget about it, right? So uh, that's if you, that's if you, that's just a kind of a propaganda, right? That's just kind of all, just, just uh, trying to pressure you to do something. But the idea, the idea is this, flatten the curve, right? So uh, this curve is very sharp and this curve is not so sharp. They have the same area. Area represents here one. The area is one. That means the total vulnerable population here uh, spikes and uh, everybody is sick. Right, at the same time, and then you see this is hospital capacity, hospitals are overwhelmed, critically ill individuals are not treated at the same time. Right? It's like you can fight uh, one person, but you cannot fight 100 at the same time. So uh, the logistics was to, what you can do is by separating people, by, by using precautionary measures, you are trying to uh, spread the disease um, you know, from happening at the same time. You are trying to change the rate of infection R. Good. Are you with me, guys? And before I uh, continue, I would like to ask you a small little question. How many of you believe in science? If you believe in science, please type in, I believe in science. Yeah, okay, a lot of you believe in science. Wonderful, right? It's not wonderful at all. You know, when I when I hear people say I believe in science, I want to smack them. You know why? Because it's called an oxymoron. You know what's an oxymoron? It's if you remove it's ox and moron. Because science is not religion. You believe in religion, but science is something that you think, question, think, you don't believe anything. You you just uh, try to predict the consequences. You try to uh, to the best, it's always called theory. You understand? Even, even if it's very, very strong, if the evidence are very strong, it's always called theory. It's called theory of relativity, right? Newtonian theory. Do you know why? Because as far as we know, we have not been able to find contradiction to it. You understand? As far as we know, it seems to hold and it seems to hold very well. Yes, you understand. Uh, so, so science facts, facts are actually a very, thank you guys for participating. You are a bit more excited. Maybe you woke up, uh, you slept well, well, perhaps, or maybe you are not night people, right? I don't, I was almost dead when I presented this material in the morning and the people that participated were slightly less excited or excitable. Uh, so science facts, you know, uh, we are going to test how good you are at uh, thinking. How, how pliable are you? How easy are you to convince right now? Understand? But you, what I hope, and I hope, I mean, if somebody, if, if, that they would take this class to reason. I don't want to convince you one way or another. I want you uh, to be very, very skeptical about everything, about what I say, about any, what anybody else says. And uh, not so much. You can entertain beliefs, but know what you believe and know what you know. You know, there are people that, uh, that uh, they're, they're flat earthers, right? And others say, oh, you're an idiot, you're a flat earther. The problem, the only problem with this, right? is that the people that don't believe the earth is flat, that, that, that they, they believe, unless you can come up with a very good explanation or you can present a very good, clear argument for why you think the earth is round and not flat, then you're a believer in a different thing. Understand that I don't see why somebody really cares if the earth is flat or not, unless he studies astronomy and physics, unless he's interested in mathematics and many people are not, right? So that's the thing, right? So re remember that there are many things that you think you know but you actually only believe, and that's very important to uh, to distinguish that. Okay, and facts, facts are facts if you know them to be facts. If somebody told you that those are facts, then um, you know you believe. 
Okay. Know? I don't think that's a bad thing though. What, to believe? Yeah. It's a, it's a terrible thing. Uh, and I will show you, and you notice that many of you believed uh, 50% just a moment ago and then believed one third the mo next moment, right? Untrained people are more likely to, uh, to, to fall into a trap. Not that yeah. trained people are not like, you understand? Uh, I anticipate that I'm wrong all the time. And even people that think they are thinking, even very, very smart people think only a few times in their life. Very rarely. Most people never think ever. And even smart ones think very rarely. That's my th my uh, impression of it, right? Mostly people just react. They just have some sort of ideas that they hold and they just uh, defend them. And sometimes defend them with clever arguments. But uh, really, it's very rarely that people truly try to uh, be open. And very, very rarely that people can be open-minded. Okay? And that's, that's a pretty disturbing thing. Uh, so... The justification again is that uh, they, so again, uh, so supposing that flattening the curve is uh, is a good model, right? Which is, by the way, uh, when I when I realized it's 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 uh, when I realized what they were doing, I figured those are people that maybe go to pre-med, but uh, they do not take they took only calc one. They might be okay at calc one, but they don't realize that there are many many variables. You understand? So uh, so the logical justification is uh, well. It's, there are a lot of things to want. Okay, uh, you want, somebody is asking me a question, guys. Uh, Heidi, are you asking me something? Uh, so, guys, uh, Rafid, thank you, right? I am testing your intelligence, of course. I, I, I am, by the way, in mathematics, there are not facts, right? Uh, and, and actually, there was a German show, a comedy show, said that COVID-19 is an intelligence test, right? I'm going to test you, uh, your intelligence now. Uh, and you are testing my intelligence, perhaps. But I want you, but what, you know, you decide, maybe I'm lying to you, okay? I'm gonna present some information here and you decide whether the information that I present is viable information or not. You decide. So again, uh, the official justification for the lockdowns were roughly as follows. The virulence rate of this illness is alarmingly higher than that of the common influenza virus, you agree? That's uh, what you hear, you hear it all the time in the news. Maybe you were not interested in it. For me, it was like a giant math problem. So I was interested, of course, in, in, in all this information. And I followed quite a few things there. And they said COVID is five to 10 times more lethal uh, to the host than the flu. So in other words, you, you expect uh, uh, many more dead people because of COVID. Okay? And, uh, and uh, the, again, to reiterate, the logistic equation, if that's the true equation by which the virus is more or less spread, you understand that there are factors that factor in, factor out, and so to speak, that it's called, it's called an average. Average, by the way, it's a very interesting thing, you see. I cannot predict uh, um, how many, who is going to tell me what, I can only, but I can predict the average person. But in other words, if you, you, take, uh, you take population and average some things about it, uh, average is predictable. Momentum is an, is an average, you understand? We will talk about it later. So there are many, many things in, uh, that are the average and the average is predictable, whereas the individual moving particles are not. Each individual person here is very unpredictable, but as a, as a, as a lump of people, you are predictable, okay? And that's true about uh, physics, it's true about uh, psychology, it's true about many things. On average, you are predictable. So they said uh, by this logistic model that everyone uh, within the target population will eventually get sick, obviously without a vaccine, right? Uh, obviously without some, some special intervention, obviously under the assumption that the virus doesn't suddenly disappear, change or disappear, right? So then prevalence measures like perhaps masks, social distancing, et cetera, reduce the virulence rate and therefore make uh, the speed with which everybody gets, it's like, it's like the fire will spread but the fire will either spread right away or spread a little slower. And uh, there was a girl that spoke to me and I'm a bit bad with, with names. It was very interesting. She, uh, she expressed that, right? So we don't want everybody to be in the hospital at the same time. So flatten the curve means uh, uh, don't get all sick at once so that each of you, if you get sick, you can be taken care of appropriately or uh, optimally. Okay. That's the idea. Okay. Uh, and, um, here are a few things that go outside of mathematics that I hope you will consider, okay? So, uh, so simply put, right, the idea is that we continue 
lockdown until we have a vaccine. And everybody speaks vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. It seems like everybody is in consensus. I'd like to tell you a few things about the vaccine and that I cannot, um, I cannot evaluate. It, it goes into medical field, right? So you have some prominent uh, physicians, uh, some prominent immunologists, virologists. Uh, some of them are in Germany that are leading a major battle against what's happening right now. I will tell you more about it. Uh, one of them is Professor Dr. Sukharit Bhakti. He's one of the main ones. This is his latest video here, right? It's in German, but it has uh, subtitles. This video I translated from German. I wrote subtitles to it, right? Uh, to at least an expert. And he, there he speaks about uh, about uh, his take on uh, on the possibility of developing a vaccine for this specific virus in any foreseeable future. And roughly speaking, he, just, he explains why some vaccines why vaccines work very well against polio, against measles and why there is even a vaccine against the influenza virus, by what, but why, he, he says, there could never be a vaccine that, that does more benefit than harm against a virus like COVID, at least with uh, the knowledge of immune system that is, is existing today, understand? And uh, you will see more, it's 40 minutes. This is, this is 14 minutes, this is uh, 40 minutes, and roughly in the middle, you will start seeing what he is saying. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, another Stanford professor, very, very prominent, you, Dr. Ioannidis, uh, speaks, the videos, the links are also below. You might not find him interesting. He speaks very mathematically, right? Uh, he spoke about uh, uh, attempts to build vaccines against other, COVID, uh, against other coronaviruses uh, in mice. And uh, the, the mice immune system was extremely reactive. In other words, the immune system, you, they developed autoimmune disorders. Uh, they develop, uh, basically their immune system started attacking themselves. They had a very strong overreaction to the vaccine. Understand? So they're going to be on August 29th. Uh, and uh, I speak with the Germans, many of them, right? Uh, I speak with some Austrians. I speak with some Germans daily. And uh, uh, there is going to be a major uh, uh, major uh, rally on August 29 for people against the measures because uh, they are changing laws in Germany uh, and uh, they are trying to impose perhaps a new quarantine. Uh, they, are, they are trying to assemble over a million people. They're going to march from all over Europe uh, against uh, the lockdown and against uh, the possibly forcible vaccine measures that will come if the vaccine is developed because they might develop something in a year. What they will develop in a year will not be tested uh, well. Uh, say at least, but this doctor says, uh, Bhakti and a few others say that uh, a, a vaccine requires at least five to seven years to develop and uh, be proven safe, more or less, you see. So you are welcome to watch this video if that's interesting to you. If not, what can I do? Right? Uh, and uh, it's, uh, I posted a few of those translations there. Okay, so now what we can do, what we can do, I cannot, uh, obviously, that's biology, that goes beyond my expertise. I cannot tell you okay. if he's right or wrong. Hmm? Say it again. Uh, did you say, do you want to say something? Okay, no, I guess not. Uh, okay, guys, so, so it goes against my expertise, but let's return uh, to, uh, to questions that we can try to answer, right? So let's see if you can decide whether or not, um, whether what, what is a good evidence? What evidence is good uh, to decide if something is, when a disease is dangerous, right? You are not uh, having lockdowns because of the flu. There, there are flu seasons every, flu outbreaks every year, right? But uh, you did, there was a decision to, uh, to have a lockdown this time around, right? And let's see if you uh, will, will, will tell me if the evidence presented here is reasonable right if the evidence justifies uh, that just if not, at, least, at least at least proves that the virus is dangerous justifies is very difficult to judge understand justification is a complicated thing but do we have evidence that this virus is extremely dangerous okay and uh, let's see based on uh, uh, this first question okay guys so suppose that you go and test yourself for uh, corona right and uh, suppose this test is 99% reliable, you understand? I mean, I'm just pushing those numbers out of uh, the blue, right? Uh, but suppose it's 99% reliable. By that, I mean the following. So what does the test do? When I test you, I 
try to verify that you have a knowledge, right? I mean, when I test, I try to, when I test you on calculus, I try to find, do you have calculus in your head or not? And every test, myself included, are fallible, right? That's how people get away and they cheat, right? Because uh, uh, they, uh, they did not know anything about calculus. They give me a test, I look at it and I say, they have calculus in their heads. You agree? Uh, so they, that, that's, 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 that's my, uh, that's when I fail. Right? So 99% reliable in this case means that if the virus is in your body, the test will detect it. And if the virus is not in your body, the likelihood of, uh, of a false positive is 1%. So my question is this, giving this information, how, uh, how certain are you if you test positive that you have the virus? 50%. 50%? Okay, guys, type it uh, if, if I want to see what, uh, what you will say, right? Based on this information, right? So you would say it's undisputable evidence. I, I have no idea how to verify if a, if a test is good or not, but uh, I just, so, so I roll those numbers, right? I just, it's something I teach in probability. So suppose the test is 99% reliable. In other words, 99% of the time, it detects the disease if it's present in you. And 1% uh, of the time, it gives you a false positive. In other words, the disease is not there and the test incorrectly concludes that you have. Around 80% minimum, 50% roughly. Thank you. Uh, go on, tell me more, guys. If you, what, what do you think? I mean, you, you see those numbers. And don't be worried, guys. You can be mistaken, right? Or, or not mistaken. Don't try to figure out what I want from you. Just look at this information and I want to know what you think. 99%. Thank you, uh, Pavel, right? Uh, uh, what, what about the others? Uh, 99, one guy, 99, Any, anybody else? You are too worried that I will trap you, but uh, what's the point, right? I just want you, I want to tell me what you truly feel. You, you don't have to hide from me. You are fearing the flu or, or me? Above 50%, 98, you're kind of tossing all those numbers. You're, tr you're trying to avoid being trapped in my, uh, say, uh, you're trying to avoid my Nefale, my, my German trap for you, right? Don't, uh, don't uh, just, just tell me what you feel. 99%, are you ready for the answer? The answer is guys, that this test is completely meaningless without further information. In other words, uh, knowing the result of this test tells you nothing at all. And let me explain roughly why, okay? Uh, and by the way, you, you can, don't, don't think that you, you don't need to believe me, right? If you take my, uh, if you attend my probability course, I will, I will, might, I might explain to you eventually why, right? It's, uh, it's gonna be in chapter three of my probability when I explain uh, this thing, okay? So, in order to, so let me explain roughly what, what can happen, right? Uh, I need to know how, how prevalent is this disease in the population, understand? So if for some very, very strange reason, I know that uh, the probability that a randomly selected individual in my population is, cannot possibly be infected, right? So in, my, in other words, maybe I, I go with this, uh, with this test, I go five years back in time, you understand? I have this great test and I go five years back in time, then I know that the probability is equal to zero. So no matter what this test is telling, you can be certain that uh, you don't have uh, this COVID or uh, this particular disease. I am confusion, Rafi. That's good. That's a funny, <laughs> we are all. That's a probability sponsor, Dante. Uh, uh, you are absolutely right. It's, uh, I am trying to lure you. You see, you, you know about those Germans, right? Uh, what they do, they lure into their little gingerbread house so I want you to come to my little gingerbread house where I am going to fresh you or eat you, right? So it is indeed a probability sponsor because in probability, you will see the methods of calculus apply. And I really, really want to excite you, at least for today. Memory is short. I want to excite you that what you're learning is not meaningless, right? Let me show you uh, what you truly need to obtain this probability in, in general. Uh, this P is not known, you understand? Uh, trolled, guys, what do you mean uh, trolled? 
Alan, you have to explain to me. I am an old person. I have no idea where you find trolls. Uh, you, you find trolls usually when you go to Scandinavia. Where do you find them here? All right. It's just that we think like it is the true thing. Like everybody in the class thinks that it's like the true thing, only to find out that it's anything but. What do you, what, what you mean? You mean what I'm saying? Well, I, I mean, what I noticed in the, 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 to, to my endless grievance uh, when this uh, thing started is that information that was presented on the news and anywhere I mostly could find without extreme effort, uh, the information was, I believe, correct, but correct without a, an important caveat. You know, the devil is in the detail. You understand? So I don't like when uh, I am pushed with some information and somebody tries to convince me and they uh, give me only part of the truth, which makes it a lie. Okay, so uh, so let me explain. Let, let me show you what. Uh, uh, let me show you. Uh, let me show you what. Where is it? Uh, what this uh, looks like? You see. So uh, what you need to figure out an unknown probability. You see. So it's very hard to know how prevalent is anything. Uh, well, emotions are interesting. Thank you, James. Right. So emotions are interesting. Your emotions are interesting to me as well. Right. And but more so also your thoughts are very interesting to me. I, my goal first and foremost is to get you interested in the subject to think about something. Right. So uh, let me show you only show. you, Right. So this is beta distribution. So this is uh, something that you use to try to figure an unknown uh, probability. So you don't have access to the whole population. You have to conduct a random sample, maybe a large random sample. Uh, but don't, don't test everybody all the time. Oh, we need more tests. We need more tests. Like I see it on the Israeli news. I see it in many news. Like we need to have more tests. We need to have more tests. You know, you need, you don't need to have more tests. You need to have a, a very good assessment of uh, what is the prevalence in the population. So what you need to do is you need to, to randomly select individuals. You, you, there are statistical ways to decide how big is the sample and test them very, very carefully. Once you test them very carefully, uh, you generate uh, a distribution. Look how much mathematics there is, right? Ooh, right. Don't be scared. Actually, I teach about this distribution in my probability class, and here is integration and uh, everything else. Do you see this, guys? You see uh, this curve changing? That's a uh, that's upgrade to uh, to the probability curve, and uh, this you can understand. Right? This is integration. We are going to learn integration at the end of this course. This is something that is not beyond you. Right, uh, and uh, and this information will allow you to estimate what is the prevalence in the population. And without this, information is meaningless. What person is tested or not, without this, information is meaningless. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, and here is guys. guys uh, uh, so, uh, so why what I'm saying is so important? Okay, uh, let me show you. Uh, first of all, I I like this uh, quote. Have you ever heard it? A philosopher is a blind man in a dark room with no windows, searching for a black cat that is not there. You see, so I apply it when I teach uh, complex analysis, but it also applies in a different way here. If you are going to ramp up tests blindly, you will find something even when that something is not there, right? So I'm not saying that something is not there in our case. I'm just saying this in the event when something is not there and you just test, let's say if I were to go back with my test kit in time and test for COVID five years ago, I will find COVID positive tests. I will find many, many people. If I test more, I will find more. You understand? So let me show you uh, uh, what. So let's let, let's 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 try to see a few more things. I hope I will manage to cover all of it, right? Uh, so, is COVID much more dangerous than influenza? And obviously, I'm not a doctor. I cannot uh, give you all the answers. I'm just asking you which evidence tells you that it is more dangerous. If the evidence presented in front of you is presented honestly. That's what I'm asking. Okay, so uh, why is there no lockdown every year? Right, influenza kills. Well, anybody. Uh, before you you go, I would like to. Some people ask it on forums. I like to look through uh, through all sorts of uh, videos and forums, and it's very interesting to me to see what people uh, what people think. What 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 are they convinced by? So I'm asking you, and don't be scared. Right, tell me in your opinion if you believe or if you believe otherwise. Is COVID more dangerous than influenza? And why do you believe that? What makes you think that? 
It's a simple question, right? It doesn't have to be too mathematical, right? I mean, uh, is it uh, only a fear that like somebody told you uh, there is COVID, it's going there and hunting you, or is it something that you uh, thought about and you say, well, this is definitely evidence that uh, this is a very scary or maybe not so scary disease? Why isn't there a lockdown last year when there was a flu? Why isn't there? But, uh, you know, most people don't uh, vaccinate against the flu and the vaccine against flu works only very partially. Yeah, so uh, Jada, you're saying, I think, quite, uh, you say you have no idea, it's a new thing and new things are, are uh, inherently scary, right? If it's new, then you might be afraid of it because you don't know what it is. Oh, great, Hadi. You said flu kills less people and COVID kills more with, uh, uh, right? Even with lockdowns, right? So even after lockdowns, COVID kills more. Thank you, Hadi. That's what people usually say about it. And that's where we're going to go more, where we're going to uh, go into now. Spreads easier. How, you see, all those things. How do you de uh, decide that it spreads easier, okay? So um, you see, one thing I found interesting is, again, uh, uh, there are those videos. This is, uh, it's okay to be smart. Uh, and the other one is uh, three blue, one brown. They're good videos. So this video makes it very convincing uh, that uh, COVID is uh, that exponential diseases are dangerous and uh, that the lockdown should take place when there are very few uh, sick people to stop it, so to speak, or to slow it down. Because remember, based on their model, you cannot stop it. You can only slow it down, unless there is a vaccine. At least that's what they say. Yeah. And if you and I cannot tell you if a vaccine against it is possible or not. I can tell you what I, my, my opinion is, but my opinion is not a medical opinion, right? So that's the thing. And uh, here uh, from It's Okay to Be Smart, some uh, uh, some videos to try and to explain why it's intelligent to wear masks. So I would hope you're, you would you would watch all those videos and find them interesting. I would be very interested to know what you think. Are you with me, guys? It's okay. Uh, so. Uh, so those videos, they speak about exponential growth. That's the first thing we are going to uh, talk about. Our exponential growth is very rapid, so very scary. If a disease spreads exponentially, or at least initially, then the disease, and that's some of you mentioned this in the comments, right? It's like a, it's, it's like file, fire uh, over few, right? It will spread so rapidly. So uh, here is, there are many fables that describe uh, exponential growth, and let me tell you one such fable. Uh, so there was a misery uh, king once, and uh, the king did not really want to pay a wise man for the services that he did. So the wise man told him, well, I am a modest man. You see, take a chessboard, and on uh, the chessboard, place a microscopic grain of gold. I mean, barely visible, like le less than a hair thin grain of gold on the first chessboard. And then on the second chessboard, place two grains of gold. By grains, I mean something very tiny, understand? And then uh, continue doing that, uh, and then place twice that on the next, twice that on the next, so four on the next, eight on the next, and so on, right? And uh, the and the miserly king right away was very happy, he thought he's, he's getting away with very little payment, right? And he said he agreed. Now, to execute this, this is what would happen. To execute this means one grain on the first, chessboard, two grains on the second, twice that on the third, twice that on the fourth, and uh, on the very last one, it's uh, two to the power of uh, 64, let's say, right? So two to the power of 64 on the last, um, on the last chess, which, you know, there are 64 uh, placements, right? So uh, the amount that you get is uh, this many grains of, of gold, which uh, based on some estimates would be enough to make um, planet Earth full of gold. You understand? So it's as much as a uh, full planet Earth uh, made entirely out of gold. Okay, so exponentials, the idea here is exponentials, they can begin very, uh, with very, very modestly, but they grow rapidly, very rapidly. And specifically, exponential growth is a growth which is of order uh, a to the x, where a is bigger than one. So for example, this is a growth of two to the power of x. Yes? Two to the power of x means it's, it's, it's growing twice, right? 
yes, somebody said something, I always get excited when you speak, guys. I, I want well, to see your reaction. Yes? I noticed on this question and on another one, or like formula, that there was like an exponential and then the minus one was there. Why is there the minus one? Ah, well, we can we can talk about it. Because it's one plus two plus, uh, plus four plus eight, right? Uh, and if you do that, then uh, it, it ends up being the same as two to the 65 minus one. I will explain later. That, by the way, has very much to do with the power rule in differentiation. When we learn differentiation, this formula will come in handy, you understand? So those things will appear. Uh, for now, uh, it's it's only an overview. See, I'm not uh, expecting that you understand uh, those formulas. I think, by the way, I might have made a mistake. I think it's 63, 2 to the 63, and that would be 2 to the 64 minus 1. So uh, it, it's somewhat, somewhat le less than that, I think. It's like, uh, actually quite a lot less than the number I wrote, but still huge. Right? So maybe not the earth, but half of it. Big deal, right? Uh, it's it's a huge number, basically. Okay, guys? So uh, exponential growth, and we're going to test if you, want, if you can recognize it. It's basically something of the form 2 to the power of x, right? So, so uh, 2 to the power of the time, let's say. Yes? Uh, oh, yes. Give me uh, one moment. One moment. phone call. Uh, sorry, can you hear me? Right? Apologies for the disruption. I had to respond to the phone call. Uh, so, guys, uh, and don't disappear. I, I, I see few. Uh, I don't. I, I see fewer and fewer faces, and I don't like it. It makes me very alone, in, alone in the dark. So, let's see if you're good at telling uh, whether or not you're observing exponential growth. Okay. So, exponential growth is when you see a base to the power of x. Okay, uh, where x is the date. Let's say in this case, right? So. Uh, there were, I, I, I was analyzing several sources, right? And mostly German and Israeli news, okay? So in Hebrew, right? So here you can see under one, uh, there were particularly strong lockdowns in Bavaria and in Israel. And this is an interesting video. I translated it from Hebrew. I hope you will watch it as well, okay? So there are many, many things I hope you will watch, right? So this is... Simpl I simplify the numbers, but this is the way uh, they uh, they were presenting the situation in Israel. Okay, so I simplified it because the numbers were not so apparent, right? Right. So they say today, or oh, say during this week on Monday, we had two sick people, two newly uh, newly infected people. On uh, the next day, we have four newly infected people. The next eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. Does this pattern appear to follow exponential? Is this pattern exponential growth? You see, true or false? Based on this evidence, we can conclude that the infection is spreading exponentially. You understand what I'm asking? So uh, Zohab, uh, Zohaib is saying no. Of course, I want your arguments, right? I mean, no, no, don't try to psychologically anticipate me. Try to give me arguments, my friends. Which means what? T t times two, so uh, not enough evidence. It's linear increasing by factor of two. Uh, linear, linear increasing. Well, you have to be careful, guys. You have to be careful, right? You understand what's exponential growth? So it's a, it's uh, in this case two to the time, right? So two to the one is two, two to the two is four, two to the three is eight, two to the four is sixteen, right? So isn't it exponential growth of, of the spread of this the disease spreads exponentially? You understand what I mean, right? Uh, right. So not enough information. Well, I, I am. Let's say the pattern will continue some some time more. Obviously, uh, it's not enough information to be sure what it will happen forever. But does it appear for now to follow exponential growth? You understand? In other words, this is an, uh, this is something they show on Israeli TV, and everybody, oh, oh, let's lock down the let's let's lock down the country, right? Let's uh, destroy. The economy. Let's starve the people because we don't want to get sick. And there are only what 800 people uh, that died in Israel from this disease. Of course, because of the lockdown, right? Because they were so smart and at the very beginning started the lockdown. 
I can tell you more about it. Uh, a friend of mine goes to the bar, he drinks and fights there. And so, and always used to, and always calls me from bars. It annoys the hell out of me, right? He goes to, to a bar and he's like, uh, drinks and then, yeah, he kind of, somebody, 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 is, uh, somebody some, some woman says, who doesn't like my husband? And he stands up, I don't like your husband <laughs> for no freaking reason, right? So that's my friend in Israel. I'll tell you more about him, right? He's a weird guy. All right, so, uh, so yeah, so let's back in, uh, back to this question. So is it exponential growth? Is it exponential growth or not? I'm not trying to budge you, I'm just asking. You are the experts. Yes, yes, it is, it is. Yes, I convinced you. I convinced you it's exponential growth. Or the news convinced them that it's exponential growth. But here is the problem, my friends, right? Uh, the, the news does not mention how many tests were carried out. You understand? So here, let me try to tell you what's the answer. The answer is based on this information, it's impossible to tell. Maybe it is exponential growth, maybe not. And let me explain to you why. I'll give you a scenario. You understand what I'm saying, right? So that's the news, truly the news, what they present, and that's going to get me so irritated, right? Because uh, to a person that doesn't know, they write away, oh my God, we have this thing. where they, It's like a propaganda thing, right? Uh, but they neglect to mention how many people are getting sick. I mean, sorry, how many uh, people uh, have been tested, right? So here is one scenario. It could be exponential growth or not, but here is one scenario. Imagine that uh, on day uh, one, I test 10 people and two of them test positive, assuming that, by the way, uh, the test is infallible, right? So two of them uh, found carriers, right? So I get alarmed. My God, we have the disease in this country. So I test 20 people the next day and I find four positive. And so, my God, I test on the third day 40 people and I find eight positive. I keep up and on the seventh day, I test 640 people and I find 128 of them that are positive. But look at the fraction, two over 10, four over 20, eight over 40, 128 over 640 are all the same number. So if this is the situation without, very, without specifying the tests, now I could possibly have the situation where I did not exponentiate uh, the disease, I exponentiated the tests. You understand that the disease is stable. The number of infected people is linearly progressing, right? Or not, you know, it's, it's the, the number of infected is stable. It's not increasing or decreasing in this case, uh, but, but I'm exponentiating the, 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 the test. It's like, it's like, like this, if you, if you, have, uh, if you are st staring through your binoculars at a flock of ducks, you see only a few ducks. Now you, may, you, you select a wider lens, you see more ducks. It's exactly the same thing that's happening here, you understand? But they, so the information that they present is not false. You don't need to say, they need to present false information. It's just incomplete. And it, it's meaningless being incomplete, you understand? And do you think this is just a silly thing? Let me show you graphs uh, uh, from Germany, okay? So that's what's about the demonstrations. They, they're gonna be, they, they're already massive attempts to change their uh, constitution in, in Germany uh, to allow the state to declare emergency whenever it suspects that uh, there is a contagion that is possibly uh, dangerous to the population, understand? So, uh, and they had a demonstration on August 1st, okay? Go ahead, Heidi. So it's kind of like how at the beginning people were panicking because the number of deaths was ri rising when mm -hmm. they weren't noticing how many number of people were actually affected compared to the deaths. The deaths are important, by the way. We're going to the talk deaths are important, about... but also the amount of people that are infected, that way you know the rate. So in Israel here, I can tell you this, right? I found it very interesting that in some countries uh, there were supposedly massive uh, number of casualties and others very few, okay? So in Israel, uh, they had a very stringent lockdown and in Germany as well, right? So in Israel, uh, I, I also know it from personal uh, conversations and from watching the news, right? So during the, during the height of the scare, they did not allow people to exit their house uh, more than uh, 100, 100 um, feet or maybe 500 feet away from it, maybe to just go to a store to buy groceries. You could not go without a mask, right? If you go without a mask, you will be both in Germany and in uh, in Israel, you would have been penalized. And many people think that, uh, well, those measures were taken early on and that's why uh, in the United States it was neglected and that's why we had so many casualties here. But in Israel and in Germany, especially Bavaria, they were taken early on and that's how they say, well, that was so good, you see, that's why we have so few casualties. We're gonna speak about it below, okay? Uh, but for now is this, right? So in Germany, uh, because of this, of course, they closed all the businesses even worse than here. Uh, uh, many, many people are striking, both in Israel and, and again, I hope you watch the video about uh, about Israel there as well, right? I really hope you will decide to watch all the things that I present here. It's interesting, to me at least, right? 
So on August 29, uh, that's interesting to me. I want to see how many Germans are going to march in, on Berlin and other Europeans. They they want to have uh, several million people marching. I don't believe they will succeed in several million, but uh, maybe a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. We'll see. I think still the majority of people uh, are for the measures, for the lockdown and etc. Right. There also is massive censorship. So YouTube deletes uh, videos uh, by doctors, by experts, by anybody who says that, uh, uh, that, that the information is not as it is. So yes, anyhow. So let me show you uh, what, what, why are they going to have, uh, this is a graph that is not generated by, uh, it's generated from the data of the Robert Koch Institute. Robert Koch Institute is their major uh, disease control in Germany, okay? And I will tell you what this graph is about. Uh, you see this? So uh, this is a total number of infected over the, the time from the disease began. Infected means I don't know what happened to them. I just know that they uh, were tested positive, right? So uh, this is the, uh, yellow, the blue bars. And you see here, the blue bars started going up. So they are saying in Germany, the officials, we have, we're at the beginning of the second wave. You see that? We're at the beginning of the second wave. We need to start more lockdowns, more stringent restrictions. We need to stifle air travel and so on and so forth, right? And uh, this is uh, this is information presented by German opposition. You understand? You can find it on YouTube and whatnot, right? So, uh, but this is this is new infections, new infections reported. What is this green line? Is the is the number of tests, which is which they don't bother reporting. So you see you have more positive tests but you also have the number of tests being carried out going up so it's pretty much that situation in israel it's pretty much what i was saying here you understand they report absolute numbers of infected people but don't report uh, the number of uh, of uh, the number of tests and you need to normalize look at the same data when it's normalized this is normalized this is the same distribution but it means how many people tested positive per 1000 tests if you carried out 1,000 tests, how many of those 1,000 tests were positive tests, right? And you can see here, you have some evidence of possibly disease. You can see it's much higher, right? And here, uh, it's it's all, all on the same level, which could, by the way, mean noise, you understand? Because tests uh, can have false positives and not 1% necessarily, right? That might be, so this might be 10%. You see, it's roughly 10%. So that might, the indication at 10% is likely evidence that in Germany, the virus is gone. There's no virus. Right? They continue to test, they're scared, but uh, this, uh, if the graph is correct, this, uh, this might indicate there is no virus, that this is a false positive. Understand? Because 10% of the time, if the virus is not there, that's maybe the accuracy of this test, maybe it's 90% accurate. So 10% of the time, if the virus is not there, you will test positive. But uh, here, you drive it up, you have more positive tests. You understand? So uh, uh, this is, uh, that's why uh, some of those people, that's, that's uh, Sukharit Bhakti and a bunch of others are leading a major struggle against uh, the measures that are, that are taking place. I hope you are interested in what I'm telling you, right? So this, by the way, speaks of no, not about lethality, right? This only to talks about, um, about infection rates. I hope I haven't entirely tired you because we still have a few more uh, small things to go over. So, now the question is, and that's now uh, the uh, one question I, I, for, I always, Heidi, I think you, you uh, spoke about it, right? And that's very interesting. Uh, I, I see comments, right? Which is more little, influenza or COVID, right? So, uh, so there are some people and they, and they write in the comments, right? Uh, I think COVID is as deadly as the flu, prove me wrong. And uh, what do you think? I look at what people write, what do you think people write? The amount of deaths. The number of deaths, right? Very good. Guys, by the way, don't be so scared or subdued, right? You can tell me, I'm talking about mathematics, you understand? You have to be very, very careful, right? Uh, everybody, everything I say is fallible. I'm only mentioning methodology. I, I only notice presentation of information, right? The fact that information is not presented correctly does not mean uh, that, uh, that um, you know, it, it might be for propaganda because people don't understand. You want to scare them and you want to keep them, uh, you know, away from each other so they are not spreading the infection, right? I'll mention that below. My, my point is that the information in many news that I see is presented in a faulty way, in a way that uh, leads to the wrong conclusion, right? Because it's not honest presentation of information. Uh, that's all I can judge. Uh, so which is more little? So, so uh, according to the CDC, between 20,000 and 60,000 individuals die 
uh, from the flu, right? So in the United States, at most 60,000, yes? Uh, that's a typical uh, flu season. Uh, now, the death reported for COVID is uh, right now around 175,000, maybe more. I don't remember, right? It, it, it changes, right? So this is the number of it. So you can see that's clearly a much bigger number than 60,000, yes? Are you there? And um, then um, the, the, what, uh, there was one German, yeah, so in the videos that I posted on my channel regarding, uh, I posted some of those videos that I translated, I wanted to, to show to you and to people that don't speak German. Uh, one German that was, uh, was uh, you know, all for, it was smart, right? It was all for lockdowns and whatnot. He, he showed me this chart, right? So, so how does it, he, think, he thinks this, okay? You look at this chart carefully. You see this? Uh, so this is from the CDC, and this shows you a, percent, a percentage of, um, of death certificates. You understand? Death certificates. How many of the death certificates uh, show respiratory illness as the cause of death? Right? So you can see this, that there are more respiratory, uh, more, more bigger percentage of respiratory deaths has been happening because possibly of the flu in 2018. And roughly it follows this uh, sinusoidal curve on average. And then here during the time of the uh, epidemic, you see that uh, a very whopping, very large jump in, uh, in the number of respiratory, uh, in, in number of, in, not number, sorry, in the percentage of, um, of death certificates that uh, exhibit respiratory death as the cause. You see what I'm saying, right? Isn't it scary? Look at this, right? It jumps. So my question is this evidence is this evidence 175 and this evidence is it well presented evidence not what, what what is true or not i'm asking you this is the evidence based on this you know nothing you're not biased based on this evidence do you conclude that covid is more deadly Okay, so uh, Hadi, yes, yes. One person says no, yes, no, no. Okay, I, we're doing, uh, that's why I want you to watch 12 Angry Men. We're doing this jury, we're judging, right? We're trying to, to see if, uh, based on this, right? Based on this, I mean, right? So Dante, yes. Now, let me explain to you why this is also faulty presentation of this information, right? So this is not good. Okay, are you ready? You look at this, uh, this chart shows you a huge spike, but important thing to notice, it's not absolute number, it's percentages, okay? Now, let's, let's look at this scenario, okay? The devil, again, is in the details. I'm not going to dispute that uh, this is correct information, see? So uh, the, the 27.5, I don't know what's correct information, but I'm always gonna take it and say, it's a correct information, right? So whatever whatever they have here, it's correct information. That 27.5% per, uh, show um, uh, of the death certificates show uh, influenza, COVID, or everything else. But obviously, you see, you would think that COVID is the outlier, right? So most of them show COVID. It says deaths due to pneumonia, influenza, or COVID, okay? Now, the devil, again, is in the details, right, guys? It's very easy to miss it because you have been sick, right? I have been sick very long time ago. Mostly it's in my heart. So, because of many disappointments. So, uh, you imagine the following, right? So, you are prancing around, you're healthy as a cucumber. You're as healthy as a cucumber, everything is great. Suddenly, <coughs> you don't feel well. Uh, you're not feeling well, gets worse and worse. And eventually, you have, you require hospitalization. There in the hospital, you imagine, uh, uh, the patient condition becomes critical and then you go on the ventilator as a last resort, right? And then going on the ventilator does not always help. Many times it doesn't help and you die. And then you conclude, well, you were on the ventilator, you died of COVID. COVID is the main reason of your uh, death. The fact of the matter is uh, it's very, very difficult to know why somebody died, right? It's usually not one cause, but many causes, right? And uh, what happened during this uh, time is that many governments, the uh, uh, 
WHO and all sorts of organizations have issued requirements. There was also hospital pressures to list COVID-19 as the cause of death. So some opposition doctors, for example, in Israel, they said they were pressured to write COVID as a cause of death, as a contributing cause of death to somebody who crashed in a motorcycle. So basically, if you are tested positive for COVID or even if somebody suspects you have COVID, then you are, um, how should I say, then you are going to, and you die from it, then you are listed as a COVID victim, you understand? Even if the cause of death might have been something else. And that's uh, very interesting, right? So, because let me show you what can be uh, the scenario, right? So notice again, notice this chart. Notice I do not know how many people died in total from all causes. I just know that 27.5% of the uh, of the deaths are, are listed as, uh, let's say, COVID deaths for simplicity, right? So let's let's make uh, the all COVID deaths. Uh, I don't. I'm not saying that, uh, Gabriel. Right? That is. Uh, uh, they, they, that is. That I'm just saying this. Okay. So you have to pay attention very carefully. I cannot claim how many people died, and that, that will be below. I found some statistics about death rates for COVID. I'll show. I'll tell you below about it. Right? What I'm claiming is this. So this chart is a useless chart because uh, because I, I don't want percent. I want to know how many people are dead from all causes. That's what I want to know, right? Because uh, because I can just relabel from one cause of death to another. And here is what uh, what my argument is. I'm not saying that's what was done. I do not know what was done. I'm saying that uh, this chart is inadmissible. It's not a good chart. This doesn't prove anything, you understand? And, and it bothers me that uh, it's presented this way. I, I, just, I start suspecting why is the information presented this way when the presentation is incorrect? Uh, so, here is what I what I want to tell you guys. You see, so he, this is a completely fake scenario. Imagine that uh, in a certain hospital, and to make it simple, in this hospital, the number of people that die each month in April is always 100. Just to make it simple, every month, uh, 100 people die in the hospital. Then suddenly, strict guidelines are issued to say, well, we need to list the hospital bed as the cause of death because a person died in bed or near it, maybe a person fell of it. So if there is a hospital bed in the vicinity of the dead patient, we are going to say hospital bed is the cause of death. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, and I'm not gonna list how many people died. I'm just gonna list percentages. You know how this chart will look then? Then it will be 0% listing uh, hospital death, suddenly 100% listing hospital, uh, hospital beds as the cause of death. And then you can just say in the media, my God, those beds have become deadly. Those beds are murdering people. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is called the relabel. Without knowing the absolute number of people that are uh, that have died, not just from COVID, but from anything, and not just for this year because this number generally jumps. This this chart is completely meaningless. It looks to me like, well, it might make you scared. It makes me irritated. Okay, so so you understand my my objection. I hope right. Have you processed it, guys? All right, so can I rephrase it? Yes, rephrase so it. So basically, please. you're saying that if uh, all of these deaths, they're like, they occurred in this time when there's more people that became um, infected with corona and their deaths don't have to be specifically related to the corona. Well, what I mean is, you see, obviously hospital bed, the reason I used it is that that's an example of something that obviously doesn't kill people, right? You don't imagine that the hospital beds kill people. Maybe it happens, but, you know, imagine nothing changed. That suddenly you just started listing hospital bed as the cause of death, and in your statistics, you don't release how many people died. Each year in April, exactly 100 people died, but suddenly you are claiming there is a major cause of death, a uh, hospital bed, because you, you now list everybody who dies near a bed or on it as the cause of death. You follow what I'm saying? The graph will be even worse than this one. It would be zero cause of death from, uh, it, it would be uh, the, all the causes of death are due to something else. Suddenly 100% of the causes of death is due to, uh, is due to, uh, to Corona, you understand? Oh, of course they're cleverer than that. Obviously it doesn't say 100, it only says 20, uh, 27. Um, I do have a slight problem with your analogy with the hospital beds. Go ahead that um, hospital beds are, we see hospital beds in this analogy as an innocuous object, right? Like it doesn't yes. affect at all. 
but even pneumonia or other diseases like that do have a mortality rate of some kind. Absolutely, uh, you're absolutely so, Milika. Please understand what I'm saying, right? Don't take it to COVID, or don't take take it to mean that I think the disease is harmless. I do not, right? I am commenting on the presentation of information. Understand? I'm saying that perhaps every, perhaps many more, perhaps this graph, if you show me that more people are dead. It shows indeed, if you show me lots and lots, and I'm going to show it below. Yes. So for your comment, I'm going to show you, I found the data for Britain, okay? And we can talk about that as our guys, the lesson today is essentially over, but I hope you will give me another five, 10 minutes uh, to finish uh, this thing, I hope, right? You, you can leave if you don't want, I'm recording it and I'll post it, okay? Uh, Malika, I think you spoke, right? Uh, you see, if, they, if it, it could be that uh, more people uh, listed as, uh, as being dead from, uh, from COVID, let's say this is only from COVID, and uh, there you can actually show that many, many more people died, okay? What, you, what my, my point is this, you see, if you go on Wikipedia, right? And, uh, and you see, my point is this, I cannot figure out how many people died of COVID. You see, they say 175,000, maybe it's true and maybe it's not true. And the reason I cannot figure that out is because they don't give me the absolute number of people that died not only this year, but in many other years. You understand? I need to know how death fluctuates, right? So if COVID is indeed a very dangerous disease, then uh, we have a huge fluctuation uh, in the United States, okay? That, and the, my, that's my point. And for some reason, when you search for the number of dead from COVID, you find that information easily. But if you search for the total number of dead from other diseases over the years, you will have a difficulty finding this information. I think it's much easier to figure out if a person is dead from uh, from something, just a person is dead, than to figure out if a person is dead from this particular disease. I hope I explained uh, my point, Melika. Have I? Yes, you have. Thank you, right? So again, by no means, guys, I want you to, one thing that I want to, again, to emphasize, by no means take what I'm saying as a proof that, that COVID is harmless. That's not what I'm saying. My point is that, uh, you know, when you are in the trial, you see, my point is the information is presented for some reason in a way that is not honest. That's my point. And, and that bothers me terribly, right? Why is it not honest, right? That's my point, right? Uh, what it is, and uh, it's a different uh, story. Uh, so, um, I can tell you again, the much else is speculation, right? I just want to not hold you way, way too much, right? So there was, let me go uh, to the final point, right? So you understand the, the analogy of bed, right? That something that is harmless, with, if you just present this chart, my point is it's dangerous to present information this way because I can present something harmless as something that is a terrible killer, which again, I, I have known people that were sick for, uh, from COVID and I am certain there are people that were extremely sick, right, uh, of COVID, uh, right, based on many, uh, many factors, right? But that's not my uh, point here, right? I do not think the disease does not exist. Uh, I think it does exist. And obviously, uh, you don't want to get any disease and not, and specifically one that you are not familiar with, you don't want to get it either. Um, yeah, that's, so my point is entirely different. Uh, uh, let's say COVID deaths are inflated because if someone dies because of any reason, like car crash, for example, they are can, yeah. So inflated or not, you need to you need to judge. So so here is what I, I I messaged it in some channels, and there was one British guy, and here is an interesting information, guys. That's regarding deaths, right? That's the first actual uh, reasonable account of how many people died that I was able to obtain anywhere. Maybe you are better searchers than me, right? So one British guy, and you could right away, I could rightly talk to me, right? I right away could tell that the person understands something of mathematics and statistics. Uh, this is uh, the, the information he presented. So uh, this dotted line is the average uh, of deaths from 2015 to 2019, you understand? This is the dotted uh, white line. Okay, that's, that's how many people die on average, right? And this black line is how many people died in 2020, okay? So uh, here in Britain, they did not start the lockdown early. His, his opinion was this, right? Look at it. So, uh, so on, in April, and I, and I found the actual data, I found the data from 2009 to 2020. Unfortunately, I couldn't find more, right? Uh, on the British st Statistical Archive, right? And uh, uh, the number of dead people in April over all Britain for April was about twice uh, the average, you understand? And just because it's twice the average, don't get right away. That's not enough, right? Twice the average, 
not only twice the average from the sample was obtained, but five standard deviations away. In other words, it's an extreme outlier. In other words, it's many, many uh, more depths that you expect based on the information I was able to obtain, right? I was interested if I can find um, maybe some year where the number of deaths were higher, maybe than the United States or in some countries. In some countries, yes, right? But in Britain, for example, right, it, it, this, is, this is the information, right? As far as I know, I mean, uh, you can, of course, dispute whether the information is true or not, but I'm not going to do that because it's useless, right? I cannot tell you, right? If the information is true, and this is all deaths, not from COVID, all deaths, you understand? Look at it. April 24th, 25,000 uh, based on this region, right? Uh, from all causes. And it's uh, statistically uh, significant. Uh, they don't do what uh, Hadid, Hadid, I'm sorry. So what contributes to someone's death, it's something uh, complicated, right, to mention. So this is very significant, right? Now, now, based on this information, do you think this information is conclusive? Uh, uh, well, it's a, you see, you, you say that uh, I do not know what they do or don't. I, I, there were some doctors, you can believe them or not, uh, that I heard, if it was a few, especially in Israel, that they said that, um, uh, that exactly that maybe those are unique cases you understand there is a pressure to list uh, covid as a cause of death if it's found or suspected and that is as far as i can tell it might be true i cannot verify whether to or not understand i, I am not there i do not know what they write i cannot uh, speculate right Uh, well, I'm not sure about apples or oranges. What I'm saying is this. I'm saying uh, that, uh, you see, I need absolute. So this is the first graph that I consider serious. You understand? This graph shows uh, that here is an average, and I was able to obtain the data, and I can uh, calculate that uh, the number of deaths in April was an outlier. If the information is true, then there was a death overflow. You understand? I mean, the sensible thing to do is to say, here is how many people die on average, and here is how many people die this time. And this time, it must be like very, very much more than the usual, and then that might con convince you that COVID is uh, a killer, perhaps, right? And now my final question. Yes, Zohab, please go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, I just have a quick question. So that means we would never find out how many people actually died from the virus? Uh, it's First of all, that's the problem. But why do you think the estimate for the flu is between 20,000 to 60,000? It's very, very difficult to say why a person is dead, right? A person dies from multiple causes. It's just usually, you see, so what happens, especially now, is that if a virus was present on a dead body, uh, then uh, they say the person died of COVID, or at least there was a pressure to say so. I'm not sure if everybody followed it or not. That is up to you to decide, okay? Um, you see, my, my impression is this, is that I've seen, uh, uh, I got really surprised that videos from YouTube were deleted. I re-uploaded a bunch of them by doctors, right? And by people that don't appear to me as charlatans, as far as I could tell. By people that developed, uh, um, studied the immune system that uh, researched it by others, right? By people that uh, say otherwise. Okay, and that is, even if they are wrong, you see, even if what they are saying is entirely wrong, it bothers me, you see, it bothers me this, uh, if you know Orville, right? You know this phrase, hate speech is, is not free speech. You know what's the problem with such phrases? It's like uh, in Orwell, uh, if you're if you at Animal Farm, they said all men are created free or all animals are free, but some are more free than others. So that's twisting of the tongue. A person should be able to speak anything, even very stupid things. Because you see, the problem is if you say something false or something stupid, I think you must extremely disrespect everybody else if you think that they will have to believe it. Yes? Oh my God, it's so dangerous if, if we hear that, right? Because it's so stupid and untrue and everybody will believe it. I, I find it, um, maybe, maybe they are right, I mean, I mean, but that's very cynical and very, and very disgusting uh, in my opinion, right? So when I see that, it bothers me. So here is uh, so here is that evidence does this show that uh, the disease so so he, this guy uh, this british guy very smart guy he believes that uh, that the british government purposefully delayed uh, perhaps that's a sinister feeling though paranoid feeling they purposefully delayed lockdown so that more people uh, will get infected so they will believe the disease is actually dangerous and they will comply with guidelines and then you see it goes down right uh, now what is uh, what is the problem, right? So this is now beyond what I can tell, but uh, I can tell you this, right? So this is a very, very, very impressive person, Dr. John 
Ioannidis in Stanford University studies medical statistics and he stated in his analysis that COVID is as deadly as the vaccine, uh, sorry, as the, as the, uh, as the flu. No, no more, no less, based on the uh, latest information that he was able to obtain based on his statistical inference. Of course, you might ask why, I, I believe in the United States, more people died than, uh, than the average, maybe significantly more. In New York, there were possibly many deaths, although I don't know how many, because uh, the information is not really pre presented. Uh, you might want to watch this and that video. So this video is a bit, it's not mathematical, it's, a, it's from a nurse that worked at the hospital. So you see, I think, I don't believe in conspiracies, but here is what I do believe, right? I've noticed that uh, happening in some cases, right? So Americans like to be treated, right? They, if you go to a doctor, you want to get a pill. And if the pill is not given to you, then, then the doctor is bad, right? But the treatment itself, it, it might be a very harmful treatment. So. Uh, this nurse, and I cannot tell you if it's true or not. I've heard a few things, right? You see, many people were put on the respirator. You can watch what she is saying, right? And uh, that's, by the way, at Elmer's Hospital, and that's a very distinct to me because my grandfather, my late grandfather, was a, a head of biomedical engineering at Elmhurst Hospital. My brother worked there as a volunteer a few times. And this hospital, of course, is not not the best, and it's always almost up to capacity, almost about to collapse. There are many problems with it, and so. Uh, according to this nurse, many people were attached to the ventilator that should not have been attached, right? So ventilator, it's a, I, I cannot judge that at all. I'm not a medic, right? Uh, but uh, it's possible, uh, that's my speculation, that treatment has created more dead people than not. And also, if you look at, uh, at Dr. John Ioannidis at his presentation, you see, so you're wearing masks. You are keeping distance, but uh, but you see, it's a, it's a linear thinking. Perhaps hospitals or some hospitals were the centers of infection. Those are common infections, those are called. So the actual guideline, the most important guideline would have been to stay away from hospitals and, unless you absolutely have to go there. And that's obviously not what was happening because I was hearing sirens day and night, five minutes, not, not even five minutes without a siren in Brooklyn, right? I was hearing sirens all the time. So everybody who felt sick, they probably called ambulance. Some people got stressed and whatnot, right? So uh, my impression is, in some sense, uh, is this. But again, you can watch. So my impression against the measures is this. It's like, it's, like, it's like my mother, right? I imagine telling my mother, mom, I'm going to a door. Where is my pistol? And she says, wear a sweater. It, don't, it's cold outside. That's pretty much uh, my impression about the measures that were taken uh, for this situation. But what you believe or not believe, it's up to you. Well, the lesson is over and we begin calculus. I hope you would be interested in watching those videos. I hope you would like Sukharit Bhakti, right? Uh, I found him, right, after a while, right? And I follow what's happening in Germany. I hope you're interested in that as well. Hey, Professor, if you have a minute after class, can oh, I talk? But yes, well, we can, we can talk. I'm not leaving anywhere. So I'm stopping the recording and I will publish this video and you can watch it again if you want to or not. And again, guys, um, don't...